There's two contexts to not knowing something. The first context is nescience. Okay? Nescience comes from the Latin. The prefix ne in Latin means not or not present or absent. Okay? And then skio, skiere in Latin means to know. It's where we get the word science from. Okay? So you put them together and nescience, it, it actually, those two roots form another word, neschiere. Neschiere in Latin means not to know, to not know, to not understand. But there's a connotation to it. It means to not understand because the specific information that you may be uh, having uh, a desire to understand is completely absent. It is not present and you cannot actually aggregate that information. You can't bring those pieces of grammar together to form the sentence, okay? It's not present, okay? So you don't have it at all. It's unattainable. This should be clearly delineated from ignorance. Now, nescience is not someone's fault. The information just isn't there, okay? You can't be blamed for nescience. There is no blame in nescience. The person who is nescient is not to be blamed for being nescient. The information simply wasn't present so they could take it in and then come to understand it. Ignorance carries blame. This is another thing people want to think in the New Age movement, there's no such thing as. Nobody's to blame. And that goes to that there's no cause for anything that's happening, as you'll hear a lot in the New Age circles. Okay? I very strongly put down these notions, or attempt to. Okay? There are causes and effects. There are people who are responsible for what is happening. There is blame. Blame exists. Okay? There are, pe there are people who are culpable. We're going to talk about moral culpability later. So ignorance has blame attached to it and responsibility attached to it. Okay? It comes from the Latin verb ignorare in Latin. And this means not to know, just like nescience means not to know, but in a completely different connotation. The connotation of ignorance means you don't know even though necessary information is present and right there before you because you have willfully refused or disregarded that information. Whether you've Disre refused it because it made you feel uncomfortable or whether you disregarded it because you felt that's not important for me to know. I don't need to know that. Or you feel you already understand something that contradicts with what's, you know, the new thing that you're hearing or seeing. Okay? So when you willfully disregard something, okay, if I wanted to willfully disregard the gentleman sitting in the front row, he's present. I could sit just Pretend he's not here and ignore him. That's what ignoring is. This is why I, I try to say, tell to, say to people, the, the impact of the word is almost lost to us of the word ignorance because of the way it's pronounced. I tell people, start pronouncing it ignorance. Ignorance. Then people will hear the word ignore in it. And, and the connotation becomes clear. It means you're ignoring it. Ignorance. Okay? That's how I like to say it now. Because the connotation is clear that way. The, it's, it, the, the information is there. The truth is there. And somebody wants to ignore it completely. Now, that is inexcusable. And there is blame that is attached with that. So what I ask people all the time is, do we have a nescient society? Or do we have an ignorant one? Do we have an ignorant one? Is our society ensconced in nescience or is it ensconced in ignorance? I would argue absolutely that we are ensconced in ignorance in society, not nescience. I think we are drowning in information. I think we are drowning in the truth that is all around us. But people are ignoring it, largely. Not everyone. There's many people who are very hungry for it and taking it in as fast as they can, you know? But I think the majority of human beings are in the state of ignorance, even though the truth is present all around us. And that constitutes what Art talked about earlier, this consensus trance, 
which people in the so-called truth community or truth movement have likened to sleep. They're say, say that they are asleep. I, I liken it to hypnosis. If you look at the origins of the word hypnosis, right, it means suppressed knowledge. It comes from Greek. Hypo means under, as in hypodermic, under the skin. And gnosis means knowledge, the suppression of knowledge. Hypo means suppression also, under and suppression. So hypnosis is the suppression of knowledge. And that's the state that these people are in. And it's, it's done by themselves. It's not, see, we have to stop looking at this as victim, as a victim relationship. This is a willful choice. In a time of overwhelming information available at people's fingertips, the truth being ignored is not an option. It's a willful decision that people are making. And it's a decision that they should be held accountable to because of what is going on that they are ignoring, what they are allowing to go on in their name and not saying a thing about it. Content to let evil run amok. All right? And then people will wonder, why are we losing freedom? Why is freedom on the wane? Why is totalitarianism and tyranny rising up? Why do we see so much control and obsession with control in our society? You know, they'll see that. Many of them will see the rising police state. They'll see the injustices in our society. They'll see the restrictions on our, our inherent natural liberty. Okay? But here's the thing. Many of them will not make the transition to grasping. You know? They'll say, yeah, this is what's happening to the earth. It's being turned into a huge prison everywhere. And at the most rapid pace right here in America. Okay? And they'll see this lock going onto the cage. But the question that they never get to, they don't even get to the question, let alone the answer, is why? They'll talk about the symptoms. They'll describe the prison. They'll describe every corner of the cage accurately in many cases. They can tell you exactly how it's working. They can tell you all the different aspects of the control system. But they can't tell you why it's actually going into place. Why is that happening? Well, that's what this presentation answers. Why are we losing freedom? And it gets to the actual heart of that answer. So what this presentation constitutes is a master key that unlocks all the locks to all the doors on all the cages in the prison, if it is accepted. And once again, I don't tell you that belief is required for that, because truth is always present. It's always here. It's a matter of will we perceive it as being present, acknowledge it's present, I stop ignoring it, okay, and then accept it into ourselves, and then do something with it. Understanding is not the end. Taking in the knowledge and understanding it is the beginning. Action is required. See, knowledge is required, understanding is required, but then action is finally required, above all, if change is to be created. And that's how the laws of attraction really work. So, will people as a whole, as a society, accept that master key? I can't answer that question. All I could do is try to place it into their hands. After I have taken that key and unlocked my personal prison, my personal cages, and freed my mind, all I can do is try to help people to see, here's how this key works. Here it is. Here's the information that constitutes that key. And here's how you put it to work in your life. That's all I can do. Can't make anybody take it. Let's look at what problem solving entails. Because that's really critical to understand if we're going to get past the, this stage and where we're at in our stifled uh, evolutionary development as a species. There's a few main steps to solving problems. Any problem. Doesn't matter what the nature of the problem is. The first is you have to recognize that the problem exists. Recognize that there is a problem to begin with. 
And I think by asking the question, is everybody content with the way things are, and nobody raised their hand, I think that's great because it, it at least acknowledges to me that people here today recognize we have a problem. And that's healthy, that's good. Okay? Many people out there don't believe we have a problem. You know, they, they, they like this place. They like the world the way that it is. You know, which is unfathomable to me. Because to me, it's a living hell. And that's not because of how my own personal life is going. I'm very content with my own personal life. I have no self-inflicted suffering in my personal life. I don't create problems for myself. My life goes on very well according to how I live it without hurting anybody else. The problem is other people. And that's another thing new, the New Agers won't acknowledge, and they'll flip out if you say that there's a problem with someone else. There are problems with other people, okay? And people will say people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. My glass house has been taken down long since, long time ago, because I went through all that personal introspective work, and I dug deep into my subconscious and faced those problems and confronted them head on and healed them and came out of the mindset that I was once in. Okay? So, you know, people will say, if there's something you don't like you're seeing in, in other people, that's something in yourself that you're seeing in them. This is new age mumbo jumbo nonsense. Okay? If you're not part of the problem, I'm not part of this problem. I can say that honestly. I'm not part of this problem. I can look at every single person, anybody who's watching this, and say, I'm not part of the problem that's happening on the earth. With all honesty and knowing that I am telling the truth with that. Okay? But, but see, at one point, I was part of the problem. And a, a big part of the problem. Okay? What I had to do at some point is stop doing this and pointing out and saying the problem lies elsewhere while I was still part of it. And then I had to do this and point squarely at myself and say, what do I need to change here, here, and finally here in the guts, in the courage? You know, people will say, yeah, change happens in the mind, it happens in the heart, but lastly, it happens in the guts. We need to generate what I call the heart, mind, guts, okay? You got to care enough to know and then put it into action. The heart, mind, guts, okay? That taking action is the most important step when it comes to creating change. We're going to get to that in a moment. But the whole point here is I had to look at what I needed to change about myself in my thoughts, my emotions, and my actions, and then change those things in myself. This is what most people want to run away from. They want to say, yeah, I want those things that I say I want to magically to be present in my life, but I don't want to do those things that require self-change in how I think, in how I feel, and in how I act. I want it magically to happen without changing those things in me. 